Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 18 Part 3. Let's get straight back into it with the installation of all of the water blocks starting with the GPUs. I covered the original specifications for this build in part one of the build log. Most of the components have been upgraded, so I'm covering the new specifications as we go. You're looking at really the only components that weren't upgraded, the Intel Core i7-5960X and the Asus X99EWS. The client saw no real need to upgrade these components, mainly considering that the new equivalent CPU is more than double the price. So it just didn't really warrant the performance gains for this build, and this motherboard was also such a perfect choice for this build, being a workstation board with the features that it has, the two PLX chips for a whole lot of extra PCIe bandwidth, the connectivity, particularly all of the SATA ports. It's such a great looking board as well. The overall aesthetics really fit this build and the color scheme of this build is black and silver, so it just suits perfectly. The only problem is that Nobody actually built water blocks for this motherboard except for one small company, but the availability was very low. And it was very important to the client to have water blocks for this motherboard. And I agree that water cooling this motherboard for this build is quite important because the PLX chips generate quite a bit of extra heat. So we decided to go ahead and build our own custom water blocks. So what you're looking at here are the very first Singularity Computers water blocks. Now, Please keep in mind that if this were a product I was actually going to release, going to production with, this would be even before an early prototype because I would come up with my own unique signature aesthetics. I would innovate and come up with my own features and improvements. There is so much I would love to do with water blocks, which I wasn't even thinking about when building these water blocks because we had a limited time, budget, everything was limited. You know, it's not as if we have a huge development team, access to the manufacturer's CAD, which would have cut our development down to 5% of what it was. We had to do four prototypes, a 3D printed prototype and three machine prototypes, because just imagine this, we don't have a, th a laser scanner to get the PCB design or the manufacturer's CAD. We have to actually measure it by hand and the tolerances are incredibly small pretty much 0.1 of a millimeter. I mean, if something is making contact where it's not supposed to, you're going to get a short. If something is not making contact where it's supposed to, the components are going to burn. So the design has to be absolutely perfect. And it took probably about 200 hours to develop these water blocks. Building them is easy. You only need access to a CNC machine. So I'm very proud with what we were able to do with you know our limited team, limited access to manufacturing at the time, and I'm also very happy and excited that we are now able to build water blocks and pretty much anything you can possibly imagine. So these are the very first and I cannot wait to, well, put it this way, the temperature testing for this build is definitely the most anticipated yet because I'm going to be testing custom water blocks. It's certainly something you don't see very often. And that is because 
more time went into the development of these water blocks than will go into this entire build, so it makes this build very special. The memory we are using in this build is the new Corsair Vengeance LED, and this is some beautiful memory. You're definitely going to see me using it a whole lot more. I love the LED feature. It gives a subtle soft glow, and this is the white LED version, and the aesthetics and the white LEDs are just going to suit this build perfectly. This is the 32 gigabyte, 3466 megahertz C16 kit. So you can see that I've installed most of the components onto the motherboard. The CPU, memory, graphics cards, and I've also installed all of the water blocks at this point. For the SLI bridge, we are using one of the new EVGA high bandwidth RGB SLI bridges, and there's no doubt it's a perfect match for this build. For the black and silver color scheme, the silver anodized alloy parts, it's going to fit the aesthetics very well. And this is just a great looking component. I've used the previous version so many times, but it turns out this one is not actually going to fit. And you're probably wondering why I have the graphics cards in the top slots like that. Well, that is because there's another major addition going into this build, which is an extremely high-end Arica RAID card. The ARC-1883IX-12, this is how we're going to be running the 20 3.5-inch hot swap bays. 20 hard drives are going into this build. Eight of them are going to run from the motherboard, and 12 of them are going to run from this RAID card. And this is another very important aspect of this build that we've been planning around since the beginning. I mean, now you can see what I mean by this is going to be a practical workstation build. You know, there's a lot of extra cables running the 20 hard drives. Something else that was very important to the client, these RAID cards run quite hot. Water cooling for the RAID card. And you can see that we have built another custom water block for the RAID card. And this one was a little bit easier because the PCB is nowhere near as complex. There weren't as many components on the PCB to design around. And also the heat generating components uh, both at the same level. So, you know, it was a lot easier to build this water block, but still two prototypes, a huge amount of time and effort went into it. And I mean, it certainly makes this build a whole lot more unique and interesting, and yeah, I cannot wait to do some testing. So I've now installed all of the components onto the motherboard area and also all of the water blocks, and at this point I can actually start installing fittings and tubing up on the motherboard area. For an extremely high-end water-cooled build like this one, the custom wiring definitely needs to be done in steps, unlike a lot of ITX and mid-tower builds where you can usually do it all at once. You can see that I've now installed the Aquero 6 XT. Step one for the custom wiring for this build was the custom cables for the radiator fans. So that was just a matter of running the radiator fans to fan splitters, one splitter per radiator. The next step now is to do the custom cables for the Aquero 6 XT and any other fans that I'm going to be running in the build. So you can see this splitter right down the bottom here. This is for three fans that I'm running on the front panel. So that is running directly from Molex, which I'm actually running directly to the power supply. So I've finished wiring up all of that. I've moved the splitters for the two radiators on this side of the build from the radiators to the mid plate. I had to do that to fit the hot swap bays, otherwise they just wouldn't fit. Now you can see the four four pin PWM cables that I'm running to the back of the Aquero here. This is how I'm running the radiator fans. It's as simple as that. There is one, of those cables going to each of the four splitters so that runs every single radiator fan in the build. So other than, than those four cables, there's only the power cable, which is just a Molex cable, which I've run directly from the power supply to power the Aquero. And then I'm going to run three temp sensors, one for ambient and one for each water cooling loop, which I'll get to later in the build log. So at this point, I've pretty much almost completed all of the custom wiring for the Aquero. You can see how I've done this little mod for the front panel cables. This is something I always do whenever I can. Some motherboards use one USB 2 header, some use two, as this motherboard does. And on some motherboards, you can't do this at all. You have to stick with the little stock connections, which I really don't like. The custom wiring obviously had to be up to this point before I installed the hot swap bays, because now that they're installed, all of that custom wiring for the fans and for the Aquero 6 is covered, and I can't access it anymore, which is probably a good thing. I mean, it is custom, so I wouldn't mind if it was in full view, 
but there is definitely going to be a lot of custom wiring in this build considering all of the custom cables that are going to be running to the hot swap bays. So it's good that as much of it is covered as possible. So you can see, probably see why these hot swap bays are some of my favorites. They definitely suit this build, the black and silver, the industrial aesthetics, and it's actually giving this build quite an interesting presence and overall aesthetic it definitely is starting to look like an industrial workstation. So I'm really happy with the choice of these hot swap bays. And you can see that we have four hot swap bays giving us a total of 23.5 inch bays, still room for the Aquarius 6 XT at the top. And then on the other side, I have set it up so that it's symmetrical. There are two dual 5.25 inch bay covers, one at the top, one at the bottom, and it actually worked out perfectly that these cover up the end of the radiators where I have the splitters installed. So to access the splitters, you only need to remove these covers. Then between the covers, I have a Case Labs add-on for installing a 360 millimeter radiator into which I've installed three 120 millimeter case fans. Now, I'll cover the thermal design that I'm going for later in the build log. It's kind of changed a couple of times, but at this point, these fans are actually going to be intakes to create more positive pressure. And because they're intakes, they have dust filters, and I'm using Silverstone dust filters in this build. They're excellent dust filters. I've used them a lot, particularly on Case Labs cases. It's time to install the pump and reservoir configurations. For me, the first years of building systems were all about finding the ultimate collection of products to build the best possible system. You're always heading towards this goal of perfection which doesn't really exist because it just keeps getting higher and higher. Well, you'll reach a point where you've found all of the ultimate products and you've taken that as far as you can and then you'll get the urge to start modifying existing products to improve even further. It's just a logical next step to take. Well, there is another step after that which is scratch builds. Building products from the ground up, custom components. And trust me, each step just becomes more and more exciting. And the goal of perfection just continues getting higher and higher and you know even more kind of distant. But it's all part of the fun. Now for this build, as always, the only option was to use Singularity Computer's reservoir mounts. There's no way I'm going to go back to using the makeshift plastic mounting configuration I've been using for so many years now. And if this was somebody else's product, I would most certainly be using it and promoting it, just like I do everything else that I use. So I've used two Singularity Computers Ethereal Dual Reservoir Mounts, and I've also built a custom reservoir mounting plate. And I do this in all of the big K-Subs cases. Basically, every K-Subs case that fits the stock K-Subs reservoir mounting plates I build my own. I can't use the stock case labs ones because they don't allow you to properly position large pump and res configs. You can't properly center them vertically. You can actually center them horizontally, but I don't know, there's a lot of problems. You can't actually put the reservoir mounts where you want them. You know, I want my reservoir mounts, one to be right at the top of the config and one to be right at the bottom. It just improves the aesthetics so much. And so this is why I build my own custom reservoir mounting plates in all of these larger case labs cases. You can see that the pump and res configs are nicely centered horizontally and vertically. You know, the reservoir mounts or the top one lines up with the plate. So I'm just doing a quick test fit because you can see I haven't painted the panel yet. I'm going to match the paint on that panel to the paint on the case probably but I'm test fitting to find out where I need to drill the holes through the mid plate because there's no way I'm going to use the existing cable routing holes to route the water cooling loop because it looks terrible and it takes away a lot of potential strength from the loop. Using the bits power, I call them through panel fittings, it really adds a huge amount of strength to the loop. It's just so much cleaner, so I'm definitely going to be drilling holes and it does seem kind of late to be modifying the case, but I can easily slide out the motherboard tray, remove you know, a lot of the components that I've already installed without too much hassle. Now, this was actually the client's idea. 
The client had the observation that the pump and res configs are too close together. I mean, everyone knows how hard it is to fill one of these big case labs cases, and we're going to come quite close with this build, particularly if we do what I have in mind. I agree that they are too close. Once the custom cables are installed, they're going to take up most of the space on the left side and balance things out a bit more, but there's still this large void on the right hand side. I mean, if you're not going to fill the case, you need to at least balance out the components so that there are no large voids, so that things look balanced overall. And so that is what I've decided to do to the pump and reservoir configurations. Also considering that we actually have the components to make this possible, it's another huge reason that I'm going ahead with this. So what I'm going to do, Ethereal Dual is designed for mounting two pump and res configs onto fans and a radiator, you know, combining all of those components into a single clean unit. So they're very compact, that's why they're so close. So instead, I'm going to use Singularity Computer's core and space the pump and res configs out a bit more so that there's you know, equal gaps from the front panel to the first pump and res config, then between them, and then to probably to the custom cables. And I'm going to make a serious feature out of this because if you think about it, when you're looking through the side panel window, the main side of the build, the most important part of the build, the motherboard only takes up half of that space. So it's very important to do something with the other half. So anyway, I'm going to test fit some different configurations. I might just use one core per pump and res config, or maybe even two for a total of four mounts. The Aquarius 6 XT has eight temperature sensor ports. If you're really going to make the most of its features of any of the Aquarius, you need to have coolant temp sensors. So I'm installing a couple of bits power plug temp sensors into some free ports on the pump tops, and I'm also going to have a third temperature sensor, so one for each loop, and then another one for ambient temperature inside of the case. That one is not so important, it's more just kind of out of interest. What's really important is those coolant temperatures because you need to base all of your RPMs, pump RPMs, fan RPMs, fan curves, on the coolant temperature, not on the temperature of the components, because you might have multiple components in your loop, which one do you base the temperatures on? The temperatures of components fluctuate so much and so rapidly, what you're directly cooling is not the components, it's the coolant. So you should be basing your fan curves and the RPMs on the temperature of the coolant. It's a far better way of setting it up. So I'm changing the reservoir mounting configuration and I thought I was going to have to build a new custom reservoir mounting plate but it turns out I'm actually going to be able to use this one. I have here the back plate that comes with all Singularity Computers reservoir mounts that allows you to mount it to any 120 through to 480 millimeter radiator. There's also a 140 mil mount. And I'm just using it as a template. Now I had Ethereal mounted there like that, not with the back plate, without it. But all I'm going to do for core, it's the same hole spacing. So I'm just going to put an extra hole, four holes like that, and that will be the spacing between the mounts. So it actually works out perfectly. But anyway, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to prime this panel and it's getting late. So I'm going to have to wrap this part of the build log up here. Thanks for watching. And remember that none of this would be possible without our patrons.